everyone, my name is Josie and I am the Research Communications Lead at JDRF UK, which is the Type 1 Diabetes Research Charity. Today I'll be talking about novel insulins, an exciting area of science that includes fast-acting insulins and smart insulins. But before I get started, I just want to make sure everyone is comfortable with some of the terms that I'll be using, as well as what exactly insulin is and why we need it. Insulin is a hormone, which is a type of chemical messenger produced by the pancreas. Insulin's main function is to control blood sugar levels by responding to glucose, a type of sugar. As you know all too well, people with type 1 diabetes can't produce their own insulin, so they have to inject synthetic insulin into their bodies. And the discovery of insulin over 100 years ago was a huge achievement and keeps everyone with type 1 diabetes alive. First, insulin from animals like pigs was used until scientists in the 1970s managed to create a synthetic version of insulin in the lab. And since then, researchers have been studying and adapting insulin to improve its effectiveness as a treatment. But these synthetic insulins still have their problems and they are far from a cure for type one. Injected insulin takes a while to get into your, the bloodstream and do its job. This is why if you have type one, you're supposed to inject insulin around 15 minutes before you eat, what we call a bolus injection, so that it's ready when the glucose reaches your blood. But this leads to a constant guessing game to time the bolus just right. Too early and the insulin will be in your blood before the glucose and you risk having a hypo. Too late and your blood will be full of glucose with nothing to absorb it, a state of hyperglycemia. So you have to be able to somehow see into the future at restaurants to know when a waiter will bring your food or when meals will be served at events. Alternatively, you could wait until your food arrives, inject the insulin and then wait until it reaches your bloodstream, by which time everyone else has finished eating and your food is stone cold. Or how about when you're rushing between meetings at work and barely have a minute to eat your lunch, let alone the 15 minutes on top of that to wait for insulin. We're faced with scenarios like these all the time in modern life, which is why we need a new type of insulin that works quicker and more precisely to take away this waiting and planning and guessing. And scientists all over the world are already working on this. Insulin is made of a chain of proteins that can be tweaked slightly to adjust its chemical properties without affecting its main function. By chemically editing this protein chain, researchers are developing ultra rapid insulins that work far quicker than the insulin that is currently available. The latest ultra rapid insulins in production can reach the blood in just a few short minutes. However, it still takes around 20 minutes for the whole dose to kick in. Reducing the delay for the whole dose to take effect would enable hybrid closed loops to respond in real time to rising blood glucose levels without you having to manually warn the system that you're about to eat or exercise. Ultra rapid acting insulins work by more closely mimicking the insulin that people without type one produce naturally. Researchers are tweaking parts of the insulin molecule to allow it to be absorbed by the body faster and react to glucose quicker. Several different types of ultra rapid insulins are currently at different stages of development in the research pipeline, which I'll go into more detail about later in this talk. Speed isn't the only issue we have with the insulins available at the moment. The amount of insulin in the blood has to be just right for the amount of glucose there to keep it at a safe level. To stand the best chance of achieving this balance, people with type 1 have to figure out how much glucose is in what they're eating and drinking, which is known as carb counting. You don't even need to tell you how time consuming carb counting is and how difficult it can be when you don't have the figures available. So then you have to inject an approximate dose based on similar meals you've had in the past and then adjust based on how your body reacts. But then it's easy to fall into the trap of giving yourself too much insulin to compensate before the stuff that's already in your blood has had a chance to work. 
sending your blood glucose plummeting. So then you eat a few sweets to treat the hypo and get yourself back in range. And the roller, so roller coaster cycle continues. Obviously, this is far from ideal. However, a potential solution to this problem is smart insulins. Smart insulins are also called glucose responsive insulins because they respond to the amount of glucose in the blood. The research for smart insulins is still at a very early stage, but they could one day relieve people with type one from the burden of glucose monitoring. People with type one would take one dose of smart insulin a day, which would stay in the blood in a sleep-like state until your glucose levels rise. When the smart insulin detects this glucose, it would spring into action to remove it from the blood. Once the blood glucose levels are stabilized, the smart insulin would return to its resting state again. Having smart insulin lying in wait for glucose would be similar to having a functioning pancreas that only releases insulin when it is needed. Ultimately, smart insulin could precisely manage blood glucose levels, preventing hypos and hypers, as well as reducing the risk of diabetes related complications. There are so many different approaches researchers are taking to develop smart insulins. Some are focusing on trapping insulin in a sort of cage-like structure and releasing it only when glucose levels rise. In this instance, the cage would detect the presence of glucose and only open once the levels cross a certain threshold. One idea is to hold insulin in the space just beneath the skin during normal blood glucose levels and release it into the blood during hyperglycemia. There's some issues that researchers are facing uh, that this protective cage is triggering the immune system. So when the immune system is triggered, it releases aggressive chemicals to attack this perceived intruder, meaning that the carefully engineered smart insulin system would be destroyed. Meanwhile, other research groups are attaching different chemicals to insulin to try and make it sense glucose itself. The chemicals they're using attach less effectively to insulin than glucose. So this means that when glucose is present, it pushes the other chemical out of the way so it can join to insulin. Once insulin is attached to glucose, it can do its job of clearing the glucose from the blood. Some researchers are exploring the possibility of combining other useful features when creating a smart insulin so that it also works faster employing some of the techniques I discussed for the ultra rapid insulins. As well as the potential for the extra chemicals to trigger the immune system, another hurdle being revealed by early tests in the lab is the delicate balance between getting the insulin to work at the lower end of hyperglycemia without it also being triggered by low enough glucose levels that could cause hypoglycemia. Another issue is that there is currently a lag between the rising glucose levels and the response by insulin. In the branch of research where insulin is trapped in the cage-like structure, the time taken for the cage to detect the glucose, release the insulin, and for the insulin to then move to the glucose to clear it, the person would have been in hyperglycemia for too long. A recent study where insulin was really closely examined under a powerful microscope revealed that it dramatically changes its shape to allow glucose to attach. When glucose isn't around, insulin sits in an inactive state where the area glucose joins to is physically closed. Then when glucose comes along, the insulin opens the part of itself where glucose attaches so that the two can join together. So if you think of it a little bit like a clam in this open and closed state. So armed with this knowledge, researchers are now working on keeping insulin in this closed state until a certain amount of glucose is in the blood to prevent it working all the time and causing hypos. Ultimately, there is a lot of research still to be done in this area. So let's take a closer look at how drugs like insulin move through the research pipeline. There are a lot of things to line out at the discovery stage of research before any type of new insulin is given to humans. When researchers have worked through these issues, they will move on to preclinical trials 
where the new insulins are tested on cells in test tubes and petri dishes, and then in animals like mice and rats that have been bred specifically to have type 1. If the insulin proves safe and effective in these animals, it will then be given to human volunteers with type 1 in clinical trials. Before a new insulin can be approved, it has to go through three stages of clinical trials, each involving more participants and higher doses of the drug. So the research pipeline is a lengthy process and there is still lots of research to be done before these type of novel insulins are available for people with type 1 to use. Lack of funding can cause huge delays in research, but this is where the type 1 diabetes grand challenge comes into play. As part of the hugely generous 50 million pound donation from the Steve Morgan Foundation that forms the type one diabetes grand challenge, 15 million pounds of that will drive research that develops the next generation of novel insulins. The research will cover both ultra rapid insulins and smart insulins as both would make life easier for people with type one in different ways. So to summarise, our research into ultra-rapid insulin will remove some of the psychological demand from type 1 and lead to hybrid closed-loop systems that can operate automatically without needing extra information. Meanwhile, the development of smart insulins could lead to a functional cure for type 1, where just one dose of insulin is needed each day that could respond to glucose in a way that mimics the beta cells in people without type 1. Thank you so much for listening and feel free to get in touch if you have any questions.